Now, we're two and a half years into the COVID pandemic, but the number of people testing positive for the virus in the UK is quickly rising. Well, latest figures suggest that one in 30 people in the UK are currently positive, and to make matters worse, experts are warning we may be also facing a twindemic with greater number of flu cases expected this winter. So how concerned should we be? We are joined in the studio this morning by Deputy Chief Medical Officer for England, Dr Thomas Way. And good morning. Thank you very good much morning. indeed morning. For, for, for coming us. in. Just update us on where we are with, before we get into the flu, with COVID uh, at the moment. How many cases have we got there? Yeah, so as you said, about one in 30 people across the UK currently have COVID. That's lower than the two waves we've seen earlier this year, but quite a lot higher than we were at this time last year. Uh, so that's really one reason why, apart from the fact that the highest numbers at the moment are in older people, it's a really good time now with it being half term to get vaccinated, get boosted, and that will give you immunity through half term, through Christmas and New Year, so we can all get on with doing the things we love. And so is this the, the same strain? I mean, it's sort of Omicron was the one that was the last one that we all heard of, and that's the one that seemed to be spreading quicker than any of the others. Is it still that variant? Is this a new variant? So Omicron, as we all remember, emerged last Christmas, and it's really a family of viruses. So each of the waves we've seen this year has been a different type of Omicron. We had a BA1 wave, so-called, a BA2 wave. Mm. We've now got several different types of Omicron in circulation. There's no one dominant type, but the new vaccines that are being rolled out cover against the original type of coronavirus as well against Omicron. It's called a bivalent vaccine. It's got two different types of coronavirus in it. And that's why that's being offered now to people who are at the greatest risk. Okay. And, uh, and, and are there any new characteristics in it? It's the, these, uh, as we've known right from the very beginning, you guys told us that, you know, this is going to change. Uh, there are going to be new variants. The way it's developing at the moment, does it look like it's getting softer or is it adapting to trick us in different ways? So the reason we see wave after wave are these different subtypes of Omicron, each of which is slightly more competitive than the other, slightly more infectious, which is how they sort of, they compete with one another and why we have the sort of evolution we've mm. seen. However, over time, I mean, think about where we were two, three years ago when there were so very many more people getting so ill they were going into intensive care. That's much less the case as in no small part because of vaccination. About 95% of people now have antibodies to coronavirus, either from infection mm. or from vaccination. And that puts us in a much stronger place. It's why people are seeing less severe disease, but it's why it's really important for people who are older, people who have a range of health conditions, lung conditions, heart conditions, kidney conditions, top up their immunity this year by getting a vaccine, getting a booster. And you can do that in really quite a few ways. You don't have to wait to be called. There are walk-in centres or you can book online or by calling 119. I did the uh, online booking the other day, um, and, uh, and I've got to say, it, it couldn't have been easier. Um, it couldn't have been more understandable and manageable. And when I got to the vaccine centre, mm. I mean, I was in and out in 40 seconds. It was so fast and so efficient. So we've got it down to a fine art now, mostly. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pleased to hear that. And I encourage, you know, as many people who are watching as possible who are eligible this year, look for the most convenient option for you. For some people, that will be going to your GP practice and they'll invite you. For others, it's going online, as, as, as you did, or it's booking via, 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 the, uh, via the, the phone line, or indeed going to a walk-in centre or a pharmacy. At my local pharmacy, a bit like the, your experience, you know, people come in, they get through very, very quickly, and we're, you know, everybody is delighted to see as many people as we can. So, that's, that's COVID, but the thing that you're really concerned about also is flu. And that's because in previous years, really because of lockdown and we haven't been intermingling with one another, that flu season hasn't really been about. Yeah, the restrictions that kept us safe against COVID were also very, very effective against a range of respiratory conditions like flu. Mm. So there hasn't really been much flu around globally for the last two years. But we know from the Southern Hemisphere, who are just coming out of their winter as we go into ours, that flu is back. Uh, Australia, for example, detected a lot more cases of flu quite a lot earlier than they had in the years before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, one reason for that is uh, there were quite a lot of cases in children, and children are eligible for a flu vaccine mm -hmm. in this country. That's all children who are aged over two uh, are eligible for one of these, uh, it's called a nasal vaccine. It's a bit like a nasal spray, much, much more convenient than a, than a, a, you know, a needle-based vaccine. Mm -hmm. you, um, you often get a heads up you guys, um, from what happens in the Southern Hemisphere, they tend to get it for us and then the strain that they get ends up over here, uh, which means that you can, if you quickly tailor, tailor the vaccine. Um, 
How bad is this strain that, uh, that is beginning to creep in now? So one of the things I think people don't appreciate is that the flu jab covers you against four different strains of flu every year. And that's based on what we see in the Southern Hemisphere because, of course, flu is passed from person to person. So we can learn from the Southern Hemisphere without being absolutely certain that's what will happen here. We know uh, that the four most frequently occurring strains are the ones that this vaccine will cover. Uh, if we look at Australia's experience, they detected an earlier outbreak and a bigger outbreak and an outbreak that's affected children more. That's not necessarily a perfect guide to what will happen here, which is why older people and all of those with a range of different health conditions are also being offered mm -hmm. a flu jab here. Um, Dr Chris was talking about the importance of getting particularly young children um, vaccinated against flu. There are going to be parents that are going to feel anxious about that, that are going to be concerned. What would you say to them to alleviate any of that worry? So flu can be quite serious in children. It can cause bronchitis, it can cause pneumonia and quite nasty middle ear infections. And it can be particularly uh, serious in people and children who have, for example, asthma. So there's a range of reasons why getting vaccinated against flu is important. It, stop, it spots children getting flu. It means that children will spend more time in school because they're not off sick with the flu. And of course, it reduces the chance of having a little mini outbreak in your own household or mm. spreading it to older or more vulnerable relatives. So quite a few reasons to get but vaccinated. The safety, I think it's the mm. safety element of the vaccine that people obviously yeah. naturally they hear it and they go oh it's my child and they panic. Yeah so the, the flu vaccines in particular are amongst the most studied vaccines in the world. Millions of people have had them and there's a very good safety profile for them. Not only that because it's a nasal spray uh, it's far less sort of painful there's none of the problems of having needle-based vaccines. If you're worried about that there's a full range of information on the NHS websites of all four nations of the UK or speak with the person who's going to be giving you giving you your vaccine they're very safe very well proven vaccines in the um, in the early days uh, of, of, of the vaccines there were all sorts of outrageous rumors flying around which have all been disproven um, uh, and uh, and so what do you say to people who are still skeptical and don't trust it so there's as you say been quite a few rumors about all sorts of things not just vaccines uh, over the years we know from both the coronavirus and the flu vaccines that the most common side effects that people get are a little bit of aching around your arm, sometimes some mild flu-like symptoms being a little bit of a temperature or a bit of muscle aches. Those are completely treatable by taking some paracetamol, drinking plenty of fluids, and it's far safer and far better than getting coronavirus or flu. They're very well proven vaccines and I'd encourage people, look for the official sources of information and speak with your GP if your GP is giving you your vaccine or the pharmacist or whoever it is that you go to see if you've got any questions. And is there is there a world, if these numbers continue to rise, that we would ever see any restrictions coming back in? So I think that's extremely unlikely for a number of reasons. The vaccines are very, very effective at protecting us. They mm -hmm. give me, if I get vaccinated, protection. On top of that, there are a range of behaviours we can all take, and we were used to doing this before the pandemic, that protect each other. If you've got symptoms, don't go out or don't go and see your mother or your grandmother or people yeah. who you know are vulnerable until your symptoms are better. That's usually only two or three days. Then washing your hands, making sure that you're meeting in well-ventilated places, sometimes wearing a mask. Those are all things that help to reduce transmission to help us to protect each other whilst the vaccines protect us. So a range of things we can do to look after ourselves as well as each other this Christmas. How serious would it be to get both at the same time? Because that's very possible. It is possible. You'd be very unlucky, but it is quite possible. And then when your body's trying to fight off two really quite serious respiratory viruses at one time, that's quite a strain. And another reason why getting vaccinated is the right thing to do. On the, on the sort of the counter point to that is it's absolutely safe and still very effective to get both vaccines at the same time, if that's more convenient to you and if your centre is doing that, because the very small amount of a hit it gives to your immune system is something that you're more than able to tolerate. It means you get it done at once if that's convenient for you. Okay, right. thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Thanks for your so time. Much.